For the past 10 years, Everything Paranormal has captured the attention of many people, invaded TV, radio, the books we read, movies, even in the news, and the popularity seems to keep growing. No longer talked about in hushed voices or kept hidden, now people are talking around the proverbial water cooler with incidents that happened years ago or just yesterday. Seems many are curious and anxious to tell stories about their own brush with the supernatural. I'm Jackie Meter, Director of Central California Paranormal Investigators, and this is my co-host, sensitive healer and Reiki master of Casa del Curandero and partner in crime, because it's a crime we didn't do this sooner, Krista Erickson. Thank you, and yes, it is a crime. <laughs> so together we are going to be talking about things that go bump in the night and even in the day. We are going to take you to places that some say are haunted, meet those who hunt for ghosts, venture into the wilderness and search Bigfoot, watch the skies for UFOs, and investigate urgent legends. Those who are on a journey and committed to researching all manner of the paranormal. We hope you enjoy our special guests and discussions on various paranormal topics. You are watching Paranormal Journeys. Merry Christmas. Hope you've all had a wonderful holiday, but it's not quite over just yet. In just eight days, um, most of us will say goodbye to the old and celebrate the beginning of a new year. As 2014 approaches, there will be reflections and memories from the year past, some good, some bad, things we should have done but didn't, and things we did that we wish we could take back. Well, guess what? All is not lost. Whether it's a change in career, attitude, or lifestyle, we all get another try. Yep, I'm talking about New Year's resolutions. We make them, break them, and think up clever excuses why, and then it all becomes a joke. Frankly, I don't like that word resolutions. It seems the minute we make one, we've set ourselves up for failure. So how about this? Instead of resolutions, let's call them choices, because really, that's what they are. So as we head into 2014, we're going to talk about mind, body, and spirit. The choices we have for better lives and the connection between them, whether it's work-related, family, or health. A new year, a new you. So when I think of body, spirit, and mind, yes. the first thing that immediately comes to mind is meditation and energy work. And it's a good start. Yeah. It's a good start. And it's, uh, it's on the paranormal side of things. It's, um, <laughs> it's starting to kind of edge closer to the normal end of the spectrum. It's becoming more well, it's still, common. And you're really, it's still a mystery. I mean, many yeah. people don't understand it, don't know how it works, don't know if it works. You know, you have your skeptics out there, too. You know? Right. But, um, I mean, when we were doing research, I mean, this, I mean, this stuff goes back. I mean, we're talking centuries. Absolutely. We're not just talking a, a few years. We're talking centuries. This is not some new agey metaphysical thing. Right. This, is, this has been here for forever, really. For right. as long as there's been people, there's been this type of work. So right. let's talk about meditation first. Okay. And I like meditation because mm -hmm. anybody can do it. It can require absolutely no investment to begin with. You right. just need yourself. I mean, right. you can buy stuff to enhance it or tools, but... But really, it's just a matter of sitting down and being quiet. Really, and it just yeah. clear the mind, you know, and just kind of let it let it roll. And yeah. Uh, yeah. you know, I mean, I told you earlier, you know, uh, I used to meditate too back in my my hippie days. Okay, your don't hippie tell days. my hippie uh -oh. days. Don't tell me <laughs> but you know, and, but you know, you would sit down, you'd sit in your yoga position, and you'd face your mantra, and you know, and you'd do close the eyes, do the whole thing, and everything had to be really quiet, you know. Nowadays, as I've gotten older, I don't need to do that anymore. You know, I can do it while I'm washing dishes, or it gets anything. easier. Mm -hmm. It gets easier over mm -hmm. time. You don't have to concentrate on it so much. Mm -hmm. And there's so many different ways to meditate. Mm -hmm. So you just brought one up, the chanting. Mm -hmm. So tell me about that, because I've never done the chanting. Well, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo was the chant. Oh, say and that again. Nam, <laughs> you're going you're gonna to make me pronounce this correctly. <laughs> and I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it correctly after all these years, but it's Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. Okay, what okay. did it mean? I, I don't remember. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, but that's not even the point, I, though. You no, know, and I it's, think it was more, it really didn't have a meaning per se, but mm -hmm. I think it was just a, a, a chant to kind of get your, clear your mind. I mean, it may have a meaning uh, that I'm not aware of. But, right, but I um, think the, really the purpose of a chant is to get you to focus on something right. other than 
Right. The th hundreds of thoughts going through right. your mind at that moment. And you have a visual aid. You had a visual aid too. You, you had a, a mantra or something like I had the, on the back of my door. So I would get in my yoga position and then I would look at the mantra and then I would do the chanting. Okay, yeah, so that one you actually, you had mm -hmm. eyes open. Yes. You're focusing on an image. Yes. You're, you're chanting words. Yes. That sounds pretty hippie-ish. <laughs> 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 but no, but it, but it works for some people. Yeah. It does. Yeah, and it worked. It worked for yeah. a while. See, I, I, I can't do chanting. Mm -hmm. I've tried it, and I just, I get so focused on whether or not I'm saying it correctly that it just, it, mm -hmm. I fail every time. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, what works is... Um, guided meditation. Mm -hmm. So what I do when I meditate is I usually have to put on a CD or okay. or I'm in a group and right. a live person is leading a meditation and you know it's your eyes are closed, you take a few deep breaths and you start to visualize mm -hmm. a journey of sorts. Mm -hmm. You know usually it's, it's always kind of you know it's a nice calm day, you're out in the field, there's water, you know they, they all kind of have the same yeah visualizations, mm -hmm. but eventually you get to a tree or a well or the beach or somewhere that you think is peaceful and then you just kind of let your mind go. See, now you, I laugh at the chanting and <laughs> well, you're laughing well, at this. <laughs> because the last time I did meditation in a group and I was trying it out and, and they had, they put on an ocean waves and it mm -hmm. was beautiful and I'm walking on the beach in my mind and I'm, you know, and it's enjoying the ocean and I could smell the, the, the salt air and then all of a sudden a, a, a seagull poops on my head. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, that's me though. That's, that's, that's what, that's me, you know. <laughs> so it woke me right up. <laughs> right. You see, but everyone has their own, yeah. their own take. And, and I've even been, I've been a part of a class. I'm probably going to butcher this. So if anybody practices this type of meditation, I'm really sorry. But I believe it's called a Vispana. Um, and this one I found really helpful when I first started to meditate. Mm -hmm. So what you do is you sit down. Your eyes can be opened or closed, it doesn't matter. It's kind of like whatever you're comfortable with. Mm -hmm. But what you do, instead of trying to clear your mind or instead of trying to focus on something specific, you count. Oh. So you count and it's just, uh, with each breath, you count your mm -hmm. breaths and you okay. only count to 10. Once you hit 10, you start back at one. Right. But it's harder than you'd think because what happens yeah. is you start in your, in, in your mind, you're not saying it verbally, but you know, if you, you go one, to, oh, I should have, did I lock the door? Oh, I need to feed the dog. <laughs> Turn off the coffee pot. Did I do this? And then you realize, oh, I'm off track. So then you just start back over at one, two. You know, so it's kind of like. Um, that would be hard for me. It's hard at first. But I think like me. all meditation, it gets easier as you do it. But it's nice because it, it's, it's okay if your mind wanders. Mm -hmm. But as soon as you realize that your mind has wandered, you get back to task. So it helps to kind of <coughs> train your brain yeah. in a way okay. to get into a meditative state. Right. I understand state. that. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. And then you, you know, then you get the people that are able to just sit down outside and listen to nature. See, I can't do that because I hear a stick crack behind me and I think it's like a grizzly bear or something, you know? <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Better than a seagull pooping on your head. Well, that's true. That's true. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things that it's just sit down and try it. I mean, really just sit down and try it and see what works for you. Mm -hmm. And there's so many benefits to it. So I know you were telling me that you were reading some articles. Well, yeah, when I was doing the research and I was so surprised, not only is meditation or a form of meditation so old. I mean, like I said, we're going back centuries. Mm -hmm. This is, like I said, this is not something that's new agey. Um, I, mean, I mean, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, um, Judaism, I mean, all had meditation techniques uh, in prayer and, yeah. and in their ceremonies. And it's like, uh, I, I was amazed. I, I was amazed. I mean, I knew it was old. I knew it went back to the Asian culture, mm -hmm. but I, I was amazed that all the other faiths and religions were, had some form of meditation practice as well. It is really, yeah, yeah, it's a worldwide thing. Yeah. 
And like yeah. you said, for centuries, I yeah. mean, it's not like somebody just made this up last year, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it, we, uh, of course, we westernized a, a lot of what the Asian culture uh, exactly. started. But I mean, I mean, whatever works. I mean, we've modified it. Uh, certain people have modified it. Certain sects have modified it. But mm -hmm. the meditation practice, it's still there in its, in its basic form. Right, and I think that's mm -hmm. what I like about it, because with that basic form, you can add as much ritual to it as you want. Yeah. You know, if, if you want to make it so you sit down in a certain room or a certain area and you light a certain candle or you have a certain <laughs> CD, I mean, yeah. that's all, it's all ritual. What you do, it's ritual. People call it habit, but, you know, it's, it can be as much a, or as little as you want. Um, like you said, now you don't yeah. do it so much formally anymore. You just kind of... As you're outside? I, I'm outside, yeah, doing daily things. I mean, obviously not driving or, or anything like that. But, you know, if I'm reading even and, and I'm just kind of getting ready to fall asleep or whatever, you know, my mind just kind of, just kind of quiet my mind. Right. You know, and that's what reading does for me. It just helps me to quiet my mind. And then it relaxes and quiets. Or I'd be washing dishes and I'm just quiet. I'm quietly just pondering, I think, yeah. is, more, is a better word than thinking. But just pondering and... Yeah. And sitting outside in the morning and having my coffee, you know, um, playing with the dog. Just, exactly. Yeah, it, just, it really mm -hmm. becomes a part of your yeah. daily life. Yeah. yeah. What do you think people, what are the misconceptions that you think people have about meditating? I would say that it's hippie. It's a hippy dippy mm -hmm. new age mm -hmm. met metaphysical thing. Yeah. And, you know, and it, it's given that label because the people that tend to promote it, are kind of hippy dippy new agey people. Let's be honest here. <laughs> really, <laughs> but it is becoming more mainstream. I mean, we're seeing meditation in in gyms. You can go to your local gym yeah. and find meditation classes yeah. now, along with yoga classes and right. things like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think people think it's too hard, and I think people think that they don't have time for it. You know, it's like I can see that. Where can I, can I find that. time to sit and do nothing? But in right. truth, why aren't you finding time to sit and do nothing? Yeah. That's so important, especially in our busy lives. And it's really not necessary. Like I said, I do it walking the dog or right. play with the dog. You don't have to sit and do nothing. You know, it's just yeah. it's just a question of just quieting your mind and just pondering, you know, not not pondering your existence. I mean, that's pretty that's philosophical. Pretty deep. Yeah, it is deep. I mean, but yeah. just pondering maybe a decision you have in your life. You know, maybe yeah. you have a decision to make in the next couple of weeks and you're thinking, you know, what do I do? What do I do? You know, where do I go? You know, maybe I need to talk to somebody. Maybe I need to get some support. Some support. But, you know, it's things like that. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and, and it doesn't have to be a long, drawn-out process. I mean, it can right. be five minutes. Right. It could exactly. be 20 minutes, it could be an hour, right. you know, it depends right. on your time. But, you know, even just five minutes has huge health benefits. Uh, you know, they say that um, regular meditation, obviously it reduces stress. I mean, that's kind of like the right. main point of that. Mm -hmm. But by reducing stress, you're reducing your blood pressure. Right. And, oh, you want know what the best thing is? What? Okay, so I actually, and it's funny because I wasn't researching meditation at this point. I just happened to be reading one of my, like, girly magazines. I think it was... Um, it might have been In Shape magazine. Yeah. And uh, there, they had an article on the benefits of meditation yeah. and its anti-aging effects. Oh. All right, women and okay. men. Okay. So. <laughs> I can do that. Yeah. I, I can do that. I'm going to do more meditating. <laughs> yeah, but there have been studies that show a direct link between yeah. people that regularly meditate mm -hmm. and how they appear. So people that regularly meditate because they have low, lower stress hormones in their body right. and lower blood pressure, you know, they're just overall healthier. And less wrinkles, probably less well, wrinkles. Well, yeah, it actually, it, it shows yeah. on the face. It shows in the skin. Right. Like, you can physically see the hmm. difference. So, you know, forget anti-aging in a bottle. Go sit and yeah, right. be quiet for a few minutes. <laughs> yeah, and this is free. Yeah, exactly. This is free. That's the best part. It's free. That's the best yeah. part. So, if I wanted to get back into meditating, mm -hmm. um, on a, on a regular basis and not just like that I had a crisis in my life or whatever but if I want to get back and do a kind of a regular thing um, and a little bit more formal mm -hmm. where would I start well you know it's hard to start on your own sometimes okay. because it's so easy to get discouraged you know mm -hmm. like you start having these thoughts like why can't I just empty my mind why can't I focus on these numbers or why can't I focus on this visual right you know, so doing it by yourself can be really hard. So try it, and if it works, awesome. 
Right. But you may need to find somewhere in the community that offers meditation, and they're all over the place. I mean, like I said, your local gym probably offers a class. Mm -hmm. um, almost, almost every church that I'm aware of offers some sort of meditation group. It may not be a, something formal, you know, it may not be mm -hmm. something that's done at the church before or after service, um, but usually there's a group of people from right. that church or from that spiritual group that go and meditate. Um, but yeah, I mean, there are classes, there are people that teach classes all over town. You mm -hmm. just have to look for them. You got to figure out what you think is going to work for you and then just honestly do a Google search because it is all over. It really all right. is. How has it enhanced your life personally? With myself, it's really, it's really helped me to become more grounded, to be more calm. <laughs> you? I know, Krista? I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, honestly, though, in, in you know, being totally, totally, completely open here, I think that um, my driving <laughs> has been affected the most. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, <laughs> well, I'm being able to drive I'm, with you. <laughs> I am a bit of a of an aggressive driver. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> Pedal to the metal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, knock on wood. I haven't gotten any tickets, but um, but no. You know, I used to get. And I've I've never been one to like you know flip people off or yell at people through the window. I'm not a road rager. Don't get me wrong here. I'm not totally crazy, but I, I can be an aggressive driver, and and it has helped because I've noticed that when I'm in my car. And if I start to get irritated, I'll take the time to take mm -hmm. just a couple deep breaths and be like, this is, this is just a moment. So an anger yeah. management control <laughs> mechanism. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, that, but, but that's great. That's great. I, yeah. mean, I mean, yeah, people just recognize it when they start to lose their temper. If they could just mm -hmm. count to 10 and just stop and just, okay, what do I need to focus on so that I, my anger doesn't build up? Yeah. And, and that's the core yeah. of it, too. Yeah. You know, it, it allows you to become more aware of yourself, more aware of yeah. your feelings. So now it's like I realize when I'm starting to get irritated and instead of allowing it to turn into anger, it's like, oh, well, okay, I'm irritated. All right, a few deep breaths. Okay, I'm good now. You know, I mean, it's, it's really a way about, it's about self-control. I think that's how it's helped me the most. Um, are there meditator practitioners? Is there such a word or such a person? You have teachers. Okay. I wouldn't say practitioner. When I think of the word practitioner, I think of somebody doing something for okay. you. So, and you can't really, nobody can meditate for you. They right. can guide you. They right. can teach you. They can give you techniques. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, they, like I said, it's really something you kind of have to just jump into. Just do it. <laughs> well, good to know. Yeah. And I think that, as, to carry on with our theme for the show, I says choices. And if, if you do have, or if anybody has a kind of an anger issue or lose your temper or, and you want to learn how to control it, I mean, this is definitely a self-help technique that you can use to be able to do this, yeah. is, to, is to meditate and maybe have little mm -hmm. triggers, you know, that for yourself. Yeah. You know, and, it's, and it's free, you know. Exactly. It's all free. And it really is the mind, the body, mm -hmm and the soul. Meditation really brings all three of those together and that one act of meditating, whether you do it daily or weekly or whatever, yeah. that one act can profoundly change all three things. Yeah, if you're a chocoholic and you need to um, cut back on your chocolate a little bit, you know, maybe you <laughs> want to make the choice that figure out what the trigger is and then maybe have some kind of a meditation technique to not imbibe or you know, in that chocolate. Right. right, yeah, and that can go with any addiction. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. All right. Um, I think we wanted to talk about energy healing. Yeah. And I know this is a big part of your life. It is. So uh, what is it? What is energy <laughs> healing? And, and I have to say, but I have to say right here that, again, when I was doing the research, they're not so much calling it energy healing anymore, but they're calling it energy medicine. Right. Yeah. Because it's becoming more and more recognized right. as effective. Right. So right. here's the idea behind energetic healing, and this is going to be for all types of energy healing. Mm -hmm. So science proves to us that everything is made of energy. Even this solid table right here in front of me, it has, yeah. it has subatomic particles mm -hmm. that are constantly in motion. That most motion is constantly creating energy. So everything has an energetic frequency to it, including our bodies. 
including our spirit. So the idea behind energy healing is that if the energy within your body becomes what we call blocked, right. or it could become stale is another word. You might hear it being used. Mm -hmm. But basically it means that the energy isn't just flowing freely. Right. Then an energy worker can come in and usually it's either a touch, a light touch, or a no touch mm -hmm. process where they're simply manipulating the energy in your body okay. to get it to flow freely again. Okay. So that's kind of like the common concept behind multiple different types of okay. healing. And there are multiple. I mean, I found so many. I mean, there's the, there's the, the Reiki, and there's the Pranic, and there's, I, I must have mm -hmm. counted 20 of them, and those are the most popular. Right. There's still were hundreds more yeah. that are a little lesser known, but still practiced. Um, I know the aura, the aura reflects our energy flow, am I correct? Yes, yes. And we could cue in that picture three, we can show everybody. Um, the aura and maybe the different layers and I think there um, it is. yeah we have the chakras and the auras but uh, the spiritual plane the aerial plane physical plane and I guess the black whatever no that's that's the chakra yeah so so the idea behind this as the photo kind of illustrates is that you know we have all this energy that's surrounding us right and it's kind of emanating from us. Right. So if, you know, with, speaking of the chakras, with those chakra points that you see, the seven major chakras and the colors that are associated with them, right. if there's a blockage in there, it kind of gunks up your energy flow. Okay. And when you have gunked up energy flow, it can cause emotional issues, it can cause um, physical issues, right. it can, you know. Right. Like, like they say, <laughs> they say, well, oh, that guy is just such a pain in my butt. I just can't handle him anymore. He's just, you know, when you, when you constantly say, oh, he's such a pain in my butt, you know, so you eventually to, you're going to get a pain a, a, in your yeah, butt. Yeah, I'm just going to so your butt chakra has to be, has to be cleaned out. Okay. Right. Oh, okay. Or when, you, or when you're constantly walking once, around right. saying, oh, I just feel like I have the weight of, my sh of the shoulders on, or the weight of the world on my shoulders. Your shoulders are going to hurt because what we're doing by saying those things is we're actually taking this idea of pain and we're putting it into our energy system. Uh, that's that thought, f thought transference or thought focus transference. Right. Yeah, so you start thinking of something so much that you actually exhibit some kind of physical manifestation. Of right. That thought. Our right. thoughts right. manifest right. the physical. Right. Right. So exactly. So the idea with this energy healing is that we release all those blockages mm. so that everything's flowing freely again. Right. Um, and, you know, and it works. There's okay. multiple studies um, that are done in hospitals, that are done privately, mm -hmm. And we're talking double-blind studies that are done extremely well. <laughs> yeah. And the people that are receiving energy work, whether it's Reiki, whether it's Qigong, whether it's um, pranic healing, even if it's just prayer, because prayer is energy healing. That's a right. lot of people don't want to admit that, right. but it is. It's all the same thing. I agree. You know? I agree with you. Agree. And, but the people that are receiving this type of work are healing faster. Mm -hmm they're healing more completely than the people that aren't in these studies. I mean, right. so it's showing that it works. In fact, a lot of hospitals are even allowing nurses and doctors, you know, they have to get their continuing education credits. Right. Reiki is a, continue, is a certified continuation credit. Right. And I, like I said, in, during the research, I, I found that only they didn't call it Reiki, they called it therapeutic uh, therapy or therapeutic massage or like or energetic so, yeah, therapy yeah, or therapeutic yeah it, so it, they call it a different name but it's all the same exactly and um, some of the nursing programs now it's mandatory for the nurses to take that and I, I was surprised of course mm -hmm. it's the programs come under a lot of criticism uh, from the uh, medical association but um, still they've introduced this age-old practice of energy right. healing and, it, and it's working exactly it's working exactly yeah. and you know and it's so sad because it's been a around for hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands right. of years. Right. And we're having to fight to bring it back. <laughs> you know, it's like modern medicine. They say, oh, that doesn't work. And it, they just kind of throw it aside. And, mm -hmm. and yet we're throwing away thousands of years of history. And, it, you know, it wouldn't still be here if it didn't work. 
Right. It wouldn't have lasted thousands of years if it was a bunch of baloney. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> yeah, and I believe, but I believe the, the the mind is an amazing tool, and I think yeah. that whatever we picture, we can manifest if we focus and concentrate hard enough. So, if we're if if someone like you who believes a hundred percent, hundred and ten percent, that you're able to help people with with your Reiki. Um, it's gonna it's gonna manifest that way. I agree. It's gonna manifest that way. I that agree. whoever comes to you is um, going to be going to be helped with whatever they need. Right. Um, I know. I got to tell you a little story. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. story <laughs> my time. first my first Reiki my first okay. Reiki uh, with with you and Frank right yes. yeah and um, <laughs> I guess after hearing all the explanations about what it was and everything you know and I'm thinking okay I'm probably need to be cleaned out. My aura needs to flow and I need to have this bright, bright aura around me and I <laughs> do all this other stuff, you know. So I go there, I lay on the table and you guys are working me and then Frank tells me, he says, have you had any Reiki before? Or, I said, no. Do you, do you say anything before you go on investigation? And I said, no. Do you kind of say a prayer? No. He goes, you're pretty clean. <laughs> I was so proud of that moment. I was so proud of that moment. See, I'd be proud too. Yeah, I, I was very proud of that moment. You guys are working with you. Got nothing. You get. You got no gunk anywhere. You were an easy, an easy client. <laughs> I was so happy. <laughs> I wasn't all gunked up. Right, right. So let's bring up photo number four if we can, real fast. This is um. This is. What type of photo is this? I can't think of the well, name. Well, this is this is would be a typical Reiki or energy healing, and you can see it's a thermal it's a thermal picture. Thermal, thank you. And uh, the the practitioner and a lot of this a lot of the practitioners uh, say that they actually feel the heat. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I remind me to tell you a story I have, but um, this is an actual thermal that shows the heat in the hands, um, and it's and it's not on the on the patient. It's just right. in the hands. So, um, yeah, it's, it, obviously the heat has been radiated from the hands into, into the person's body. So. And for those of you that aren't familiar with thermal images, the hot parts show up red, the cold right. parts are kind of like Correct. that bluish green. Oh, so thank you, for you could right. clearly see yeah. that the hands were red. So let yeah. me explain that from a practitioner point of view. Sure. So I do both Yusui and Karuna Reiki. Mm -hmm. And the way that Reiki works is, you know, we go through classes in the in entombment process, and it's, it's almost like I'm a channel. I hate using the word channel, but it's the easiest way to, to des right. describe it. So there's energy coming from God or from Allah or from the, the head honcho, whatever, you, whatever name you want to give him, <laughs> the universe. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but there's energy coming down. It's almost like we have a direct link to the universal energy. In mm -hmm. fact, that's what Yusui Reiki is. It's about universal energy. And we're focusing that energy. It's coming through us, and we're focusing it out okay. through our hands to the mm -hmm. client. And yes, I do feel heat on my hands when I give a mm -hmm. treatment. Just like in that picture, it showed that practitioner's hands were red mm -hmm. from that heat. Um, a lot of times the client will feel the heat as well. I had one in particular that we know, I'll tell you who it is later. <laughs> oh, okay. But one of the biggest skeptics I, I have ever met, huge skeptic, and um, I finally convinced him to come down to a clinic one day oh, okay. and to do Reiki on him, and I was, on his, I was working on his feet. Now, he had these big combat boots on, so we're talking like, what, an inch of rubber yeah. on the bottom of his boots, plus the shoe itself and then the sock and everything else. And at one point, he kind of opened his eyes and he kind of bent up because, you know, he's lying down. He kind of looked over at me and I said, what? <laughs> he thought I was touching his feet. Ah, he, he had his eyes closed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he had his okay. eyes closed and he uh -huh. thought that I was touching his feet. And I couldn't, even if I wanted to, I couldn't. I mean, he had these huge combat boots on, yeah. but he said that he... He felt the heat so much that he thought my hands were directly on his foot. I mean, so that's how hot it can be, and I think I made a believer out of him. <laughs> well, that, that raises an interesting question. If the ailment is, is, is bad, mm -hmm. is the heat more intense? No, I really think it depends on, on you. Okay. If I'm giving you a treatment, how you feel the treatment could be something completely different than how you know, Steve, our manager over here, feels the treatment. You know, I mean, it could be two totally different yeah. experiences because everyone's 
Everyone's different. <laughs> yeah, well, I, yeah, but I was just wondering if, if I've got like a bad right hip, but my left hip's fine. But if a, a, a practitioner works on both hips, would I feel the heat more intense on the right than the left? You may. Now, okay. here's, here's another, another thing about energy healing is that when I'm giving a treatment, mm -hmm. I'm not pumping energy into your body. Mm -hmm. I'm simply offering it. And your body is the one that takes the appropriate oh, amount of energy from me. I did not me. know that. Yeah. I did not know that. So it's not like I can grab onto you and like force energy into right. your body. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to offer that's it. That's what, what I had pictured in my mind. <laughs> and see, and I think that's a pretty common misconception. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. simply there presenting it and your body is, oh, okay. is taking it from me. Yeah. So, so whether or not you feel more heat is going to depend on how much energy yeah. you pull in. And that can be do, and that can change depending on circumstances. Mm -hmm. it, if you go into a treatment thinking it's a bunch of baloney and you're trying yeah. it because you were pressured into it, chances are you're not going to get much out of it. Mm -hmm. Because if you already have that mindset of, oh, this isn't going to work, you know, <laughs> yeah. then it's not going to work right. because you're not right. accepting right. it. You right. have to be like able I said, to accept it. The, the mind is, is the key. Um, let me tell you a story real okay. quick. Okay. Uh, I, I, I've had a couple of Reiki treatments and, um, and it's always been fine. I've never had any problems. And yes, I've had a little, a little bit of heat and um, it seemed to, I mean, I had a really bad um, sciatic nerve and, you know, it seemed to take care of that. So, um, <clears throat> and I'm partially skeptic. Uh, you know me. I'm oh, a little yeah. more on the oh, scientific yeah. side. So I'm a not. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but I, I took a few days off during July and I, with a friend and, and uh, we went over to the coast and they had a, a spa there in, in, so we opted to go in and have some massages done. Now they weren't Reiki per se. They mm -hmm. were just regular massage, body massage, foot massage. I think I had a, a neck massage, a head massage, and a foot massage. And that was really what were my concerns. So, but this lady started working on me. She, working on me. She was an elderly lady. She wasn't, you know, uh, real young. But so she'd been doing this for a while. Mm -hmm. And it was at a hotel. So, um, but she started working on me, and literally got hot. I mean, <laughs> hot. Like uncomfortable hot. Like a little yeah. uncomfortable hot. I mean, it surprised me more than really anything else because that was the last thing I expected from her. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't even thinking about it. And all of a sudden, the heat coming off her hands was enormous. I mean, it was enough for me to say something to her. And I said, do you realize? I said, because I thought maybe it was the lotion she put on my neck. Mm. And she said, no. She said, I wasn't using any lotion, you know, at that particular time. And she said, I said, well, you realize the heat that's coming off of your hands? <laughs> I said, um, I, it, you, I mean, I was surprised. Yeah. She was shocked. I, obviously very gifted. I told her, I said, you're very gifted. You need to pursue this a little further because you have something right. there. You have something. And, you, and that being said, I do think that there are people out there that are just natural healers. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. with Reiki, with pranic healing, with Qigong, there's a lot of, of training, a lot of practice mm -hmm. involved. Um, there's certification programs. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. I don't believe that everyone requires that. I really no. don't. Because of situations like that, every now and then people are just natural healers, you know. Mm -hmm. and, but for the rest of us, we got to work on it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and it's not just for people. Um, right. Can we uh, see, see uh, picture six? Um, I've hearing a lot about this lately. Yes. Here we go. Aww, Aww. what a cutie. Yeah. Uh, there are a lot of animal practitioners practitioners that do Reiki on animals mm -hmm. specifically. That's their expertise. Yes, yes. And they are doing well because yeah. there's a huge need. Um, pets have become so important in mm -hmm. people's lives. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, you got people that are buying their dogs $200 beds to sleep in. Mm -hmm. and, you know, so why wouldn't you get them a Reiki treatment? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, and, and the great thing about animals is that they absolutely love it. And mm -hmm. they, when, they're, when they've received enough energy, they'll just walk away. They're yeah. like, oh, thanks. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they'll come up and they'll sit on your lap and you'll put your hands on them and start working. And then when they're done, they're just, okay, <laughs> I'm good. I feel better now. You know, so yeah, they're really nice to work on. I know we talked about the aura field. I, I, I want to, if we can cue in photo seven, I want to talk about the chakras because I think this is a, a lot of people don't really understand the chakra and okay. what each supposedly is supposed to do. Right. 
Okay, well, chakras themselves, they're from both a Buddhist and a Hindu background, depending on which one you kind of follow. Now, there's seven major chakras mm -hmm. in the system, which is what this photo is showing. That being said, there are literally hundreds of chakras throughout your body, okay. depending on what belief system you okay. follow. But these are the seven main that most, um, most types of energy work agree on. So the idea behind this, um, chakra itself, the word, is mm -hmm. a Sanskrit word meaning wheel. So the idea is that these are energy points in our bodies that are spinning. Right. They're actually seen as like spinning. <laughs> okay. Who sees them? Well, I don't. Okay. Um, but some people do. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't have that gift. Okay. Um, but I do know people that can see chakras. They, it's kind of like seeing an aura. Okay. In fact, the, the uh, auras that people mm -hmm. see, the mm -hmm. different colors. Yeah, I know some people that do that. Yeah, do those that. colors mm -hmm. are coming from those chakra points. Oh. So, okay. so some people can see it. Okay. Um, but the idea behind it is that each chakra point kind of, what's the word I'm looking for, controls certain aspects of your physical body and your spiritual body. Like the root chakra, the first one, which is red, and it's, it's going to be right at the base of the spine. Okay. And that one, it's what keeps us physically grounded onto the earth. You know, it mm -hmm. also, obviously, it controls the... Um, the lower portion of our bodies are our sexual organs. <laughs> it kind of rules <laughs> over our sexual uh -oh. organs. Please, nobody write in and talk about, want to know more, <laughs> more <laughs> from Krista about the, 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 oh, what are the base chakra. Yeah, the other root chakra. Yeah. So, you know, and then the heart chakra, which is the green one, and it's right where the heart would be. Yeah. So that obviously is going to control our, our heart, our cardiovascular system in the physical sense, in okay. the spiritual sense. It, it, it deals with love, it deals with feelings of worthiness or unworthiness, depending on how you want to look at it. So, you know, each one kind of has a different aspect that it controls. Okay. And so, like, if, if you came to me and you said, you know, I have this back problem and it just hurts and it's just, it's really just, it's made me so depressed. You know, if you kind of come in mm -hmm. and you tell me something like that, I know that depression, due to a physical ailment, is affected in your sacral chakra, okay. which is the third chakra. So as a practitioner... Or, excuse me, your, your second chakra. I said third. <laughs> right. But then as a practitioner, you would work specifically on that chakra. Exactly. Okay. And I would work on your back, too, because I would want to okay. work on the physical problem that's causing you pain. Okay. But I'm also going to figure out which chakra it is that correlates okay. to your ailment, and I'm going to work on that chakra as well. Okay. Right. So... Interesting. It can, get, Interesting. it can get really complicated. It can. But when it comes down to it, it's really just about manipulating the energy, get everything flowing to get your spiritual and your physical self back right. in order. So how often should I go in for, say, a Reiki or a cleansing or, I mean, if just a normal person doing everyday things, maybe working a 40-hour week, how often should I or could I go in? You know, that's a really an individualized question. There's no hard and true answer to this. Mm -hmm. If you're going in because of a physical ailment, you go in until it's fixed. Okay. You know, and okay. that being said, you don't ever, ever, ever stop seeing your doctor. Right. You don't ever get off your medications without talking to your doctor That's first. Right. That's well, let, right. let me throw this disclosure out there. <laughs> yeah, really. I mean, this is just a supplement. Right. This is not meant to take place of any medical care that you're receiving, but to be used as a supplement. So mm -hmm. if it's a physical ailment, you would go until it's cleared. If it's more of an emotional ailment, you go until you think that you have the strength to handle it on your own. Because a lot of times it's just about right. having that strength. Right, right. Um, if it's just a matter of you want to go and you want to just kind of clear out your garbage every now and then, maybe once a month. Hmm. Okay, yeah. all right, all right. So I hope that answers some questions about yeah, the energy yeah. healing. Um, okay. Uh, I think the last thing I wanted to ask you uh, is, I know that there are several practitioners local, mm -hmm. okay? So um, what would be the price range if somebody wanted to go in and get a, a, a Reiki treatment, say? You know, it really depends. It depends on who you go to, where you go. <sighs> there are a lot of free clinics in town okay. um, that you can find. Some are quarterly. Some are weekly. Um, I participate in one every Sunday at 9 o'clock at New Thought Community. 
And it's, it's only about half an hour long, but anybody can come in and okay. get a treatment, and which is a great way to start. That's great. As far as going to see somebody professionally, um, privately, a typical treatment, depending on how long it is, it could be anywhere from 30 to like $150, whether that's 30 minutes or an hour to an hour okay. and a half. Right. That seems to be pretty standard. So okay. it's a big range, okay. but you know, you got to look around, find somebody that okay. you're comfortable with because it is, you know, you're in close proximity to somebody. You have to be physically comfortable with that person. Right. You know, so. And before we get on to the, move on to the next story, um, uh, Casa del Cudendero offers these treatments, offers mm -hmm. the guidance and kind of a, a teaching, offers yes. classes yep. and all that kind yeah. of thing. So if you ever wanted to to find out more about uh, how it's all done and where to go, then to see Casa del Cudinero. Yeah, we teach uh, Yusui and Karuna Reiki, so check us out. All right, all right. All right. we're moving on. Um, I came across, well, okay. One of the most fascinating men of the early 20th century made his name as a psychic healer and early pioneer of the mind-body-spirit link, perhaps the greatest ever produced here in America. He has been called the father of holistic medicine and the most documented psychic of our time. During his lifetime, he was credited with assisting thousands of people suffering from all manner of ailments from depression to cancer. But there was also a lesser known aspect to his psychic revelations. While in a self-induced trance, he would speak of world events to come. He predicted the First and Second World Wars, the independence of India, the 1929 stock market crash, and the creation of the State of Israel 15 years before it happened, just to name a few. Okay. Called the Sleeping Prophet, Edgar Cayce was born on March 18, 1877, on a, on a farm near Hopkinsville, Kentucky. He came from an old conservative family and as a child developed what became a lifelong passion in, in the Bible and a devout Christian. But what he is most credited with above the healings and predictions is his belief and teachings in the mind-body-spirit connection in the 1920s and 30s long before traditional medicine began uh, examining the impact the mind has on physical health, Casey was laying the groundwork for one of the most fascinating truths. What one thinks and feels emotionally will find expression in the physical body. Mental patients can have a direct uh, impact, or mental patterns, I'm sorry, mental patterns can have a direct impact on good physical health or disease. The mind, Casey asserted, is a powerful tool in creating health and wellness. Many people who came to Casey came to him as a last resort. Most had been diagnosed as incurable and only, and only by private physicians, or yes, by, but nah, I can't talk, <laughs> but by renowned medical institutions around the United States. While Casey himself had no medical training or education when he entered a self-induced altered state, his unconscious mind seemed to tap into an endless reservoir of helpful physical information. He could accurately diagnose illness and prescribe treatment for people he had never met or seen. The nature of Casey's recommendation indicated that his understanding of physical care was really ahead of its time. These basic principles and simple suggestions included such items as maintaining a well-balanced diet, regular exercise, the role of attitudes and emotions, the importance of revelation and recreation, and keeping our physical bodies cleansed both on the outside and the inside. Casey's approach to staying well had its root in health root in health maintenance and preventive medicine rather than in the treatment of the illness as they arose. Yet his contribution to healing and physical well-being was not limited solely to proper diet and regular exercise. Casey also saw total health as including, as involving coordination among the physical, mental, and spiritual components of life. Any complete approach to health needed to consider as an individual's entire being rather than simply the illness because, and because of this concept, it has been said that the beginning of present day holistic health started with Edgar Casey. Wow. Yeah, really. This guy was amazing. He was. During Casey's readings, he emphasized the spiritual nature of humankind. However, because of the demands of life, 
we frequently overlook the truest part of ourselves, which is our connection to spirit. Although we possess physical bodies and mental attitudes, ultimately our deepest connection is to our spiritual nature, and a spiritual source, I should say. And there's his logo. Um, one of the most frequently mentioned con is, uh, concepts of his was spirit is the life, mind is the builder, and the physical is the result. In other words, spirit is the source of all life. The mind focuses that energy into creative, positive, or destructive, negative avenues of expression. The impact of our choices will eventually find expression in the physical, uh, affecting ourselves and our relationships with one another. Because of the importance of working with spiritual principles in everyday life, I blew it again, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Yeah. In 1931, the Edgar Cayce reading, uh, readings began outlining a series of lessons on spiritual growth that are still being sh studied by individuals around the world from all walks of life and religious backgrounds. Described as a quiet, humble, and self-effacing man, somewhat unschooled and deeply religious, Casey believed that in order to become more attuned to our spiritual source, he emphasized the importance of me meditation. Casey believed that meditation was listening to God while prayer was talking to him. I love that. I was just going to say that. That's one I of my it. favorite quotes. In 1935, Casey wrote a brief account of his work. The life of a person endowed with such powers is not easy. For more than 40 years now, I have been giving readings to those who came seeking help. 35 years ago, the jeers, scorn, and laughter were even louder than today. I have faced the laughter of ignorant crowds, the withering scorn of tabloid headlines, and the cold smirk of self-satisfied intellectuals. But I have also known the wordless happiness of little children who have been helped the gratitude of fathers and mothers and friends. I believe that the attitude of the scientific world is gradually changing towards these subjects. And he's right. Absolutely. He's absolutely right because we've seen in the last 20 years, 25 years, mm -hmm. we've seen the meditation growing. We've seen the healing energy medicine. We've seen that right. now from, from energy healing. Now it's graduated to energy medicine. Yeah. So it's like, it, it is changing. It is. He, it and, is. and Casey was the pioneer for this. Yes. I mean, we wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing what I do if it weren't for him. You know yeah, what I mean? Because he right. really laid the groundwork yeah. and he was just amazing. Yeah, and if, for those of you who would like to find more about Edgar Casey, I mean, just Google his name. I mean, uh, he's all over. I mean, he must have over 100 books that he's written during his lifetime. And there is an Edgar Casey Foundation if, if you specifically want to kind of look into that a little bit more. But uh, you'll find him a very fascinating man. I did. And I knew a little bit about him, mm -hmm. but I didn't know the extent of his ability or yeah. his, his life's work. So he's something else. Yes, yes. All right. All right. Let's have some fun. Okay. Okay. We're ready to have some okay. fun. We're ready to have some fun. We all know it's New Year's yeah. in a few days, right? Yeah. Okay. So we dug up some traditions. Okay. Some but, New Year's traditions. Right. But okay. we're going to we'll talk about getting sloppy drunk first. Sure. Why not? All right. <laughs> okay. So, okay. Well, besides getting sloppy drunk <laughs> and kissing everyone in the room at the stroke of midnight, celebrants throughout the ages have observed numerous lesser known New Year's customs and superstitions. Many of the superstitions, traditions, and urban legends associated with New Year's Day bear the common theme that activities engaged on that day set the pattern for the year to come. So warding off evil spirits or attracting luck, depending on what you do. <laughs> so an urban legend is a story about some mundane aspect of contemporary life that is usually believed by its teller to be true, even though it is, in fact, false. While traditional legends often concern magical or supernatural creatures and events, urban legends generally treat everyday situations and events familiar to both listener and teller. They often contain an implied warning or commentary on some aspect of contemporary life. Urban legends usually spread by word of mouth and other forms of mass communication. So We have a few. We have a few. <laughs> few ways to hopefully guaranteed a good outcome through our acts on that uh, portentous first day of the new year. Yeah. So, We kiss those dearest to us at midnight. We kiss uh, not just to celebrate with our favorite people, but also to ensure that those affections and ties will continue throughout the next 12 months. Right. So who knew there was so much meaning behind that? So 
It's very important. The, the person you kiss at midnight, that's kind of like setting your intention. Like that's the person you're going to be stuck <laughs> right, with all right, year. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Setting to smooch your significant other at the stroke of 12 would be to set the stage for a year of coldness. Mm. Okay. The next one here. All right. So there should be no bare kitchen cupboards. Right. Otherwise, that will be the way of things for the year to come. Okay, so plenty of money must be placed in every wallet in the home to guarantee prosperity. So we're kind of talking two somewhat different things, same idea. Right. Ab abundance right. on New Year's equals right. abundance for the entire year. And that includes your wallet. Right, okay. yeah. So I didn't right. know that. So I'm going to start making sure I got my wallet stuffed full. <laughs> <laughs> the New Year should not start with the household in debt, and personal debts should be settled. Checks should be written and mailed off prior to January 1st. Hmm. And All then right. nothing goes out? Yeah, so nothing, and we mean absolutely nothing, not even garbage, is to leave the house on the first day of the year. Don't so much as shake out a rug or take the empties to the recycle, okay? <laughs> really? <laughs> However, um, some people soften this rule by saying it's okay to remove things from the home on New Year's Day, provided something else is being brought in first. Okay. So. And what about food? Food. Yeah. Oh, we've got uh, different cultures. I, I noticed the Germans and uh, Pennsylvania Dutch and, uh, uh, and I forget... Uh, Oh, yeah, the southern states of the U.S. Mm -hmm. dictate that eating black-eyed peas, pork, and sauerkraut on New Year's Day will attract both general good luck and financial good fortune. Um, pork because pigs root forward, and some traditions call for collard greens and cabbage because they represent folding money, but the black-eyed peas are the key. Um, money. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, this was, this was a good one. This was a good one. The one about money? Okay. Oh, yeah. So it says, do not pay back loans or lend money or other precious items on New Year's Day. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, to do so is to guarantee that you will be paying out all year. <laughs> so apparently, to ensure financial wealth <laughs> yeah. in the new year <laughs> is to go outside at midnight and shake your open wallet to the moon while turning in circles and chanting more money three times. Is it going to be naked? You have to be naked to do that? It doesn't say anything about being naked. <laughs> okay, but I want to see everybody out there with their wallets <laughs> open, <laughs> facing the moon, chanting, chanting more, money, around, more, more money, more money, more money. All right. <laughs> but if you can't see yourself uh, training, turning in circles and yelling at the moon, hiding money outside on New Year's Eve and retrieving it before sunrise New Year's Day represents there will always be enough money found to live throughout the coming year. Right. So loud noises. Um, you're supposed to make as much noise as yep. possible. That's why yep. people go out there with guns and they scream and yell. Um, you're not just celebrating, but you're actually scaring away the evil spirits. Right. Supposedly. Right. Um, so do a good job. We don't want them around. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and if you're born on January 1st, babies born on this day will always have good luck on their side. Mm. Okay, this next story, and I know we're getting close to running out of time yeah. here. But we got to so get this one. Out. I got to get this one here because I found this one and I had never heard this before, but it's called First Footing. And it's this one, I, it's just really bizarre. <laughs> yeah. Just it is. really bizarre. The first person to enter your home after the stroke of midnight will influence the year you're about to have. Ideally, you should be. Tall, dark, and good looking, and even better if he came bearing certain small gifts such as a lump of coal, a silver coin, a bit of bread, a sprig of evergreen, and some salt. Blonde, that's a lot of stuff. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff. Blonde <laughs> you got that? and redhead first footers bring bad luck, so we don't want them crossing our threshold. And female, forget it. Female first footers, forget it. They uh -oh. should be shooed away before they bring disaster down on the, down, on the household. Who knew women were so evil? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Don't let them near your door before a man crosses the, crosses the threshold and make sure he is not cross-eyed, flat-footed, or have eyebrows that meet in the middle. <laughs> I'm sorry. That just, that, that, that's just bar. That's just bizarre. Oh, aye, aye, aye. That's just bizarre. All right. I think, um, oh, yeah. After, after greeting those in the house and dropping off whatever small tokens of luck he has brought with him, he should make his way through the house and leave by a different door uh, than the one he came into. 
So no one should leave the premises before the first footer arrives and the first traffic across the threshold must be headed in, in rather in rather than striking out. I don't understand that part, but I think mm. you have to go in one door and out another door. Right. Yeah. I think Who that's comes up with the stuff? I have no idea. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the, the flat feet, the eyebrows you know, yeah. really, really got me. That is good. Okay. So those are just a few of the odd, <laughs> odd, odd things that we odd. Use superstitions. And we right. left out a couple because we're short on time. Yeah. Um, announcements. We're going to do announcements, but I, I, if, I have to mention something first. Okay. Um, <laughs> you're all wondering, um, if Krista has purple hair. Okay. <laughs> well, there's a really super, super good reason for it. Okay. Uh, in our first episode, she had blonde hair. Mm -hmm. Um, our second episode, she had no hair <laughs> and today she has purple hair. Now, I'm going to let her explain to you why she is doing this. Okay. <laughs> well, I'm done now, but okay. I was, um, part of team and training. Right. Who raises funds, we train for marathons, right. and we raise funds for the Leukemia Lymphoma Society, and it was one of my fundraisers. Right. I told everyone that if I reached a certain goal by a certain day, I would shave my head. Right. So I did. <laughs> <laughs> and then the team in training color is purple, so I dyed it purple. <laughs> but be honest now, you do have a reputation for changing your hair color as often as I probably change my my shirt, my yeah. glasses, t-shirts. I right? like yeah. to have fun. I like to play around with my hair. I mean, I think it was why not? I think she was described as a teenage punk. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I like not it. Not anywhere close I to like teenage it. anymore. But. I, yeah, but I like it. I, you definitely have personality. Yeah. And it definitely suits you. Yeah. So stay you. tuned next month and see what my hair looks like. Yeah, no. there you go. Yeah, we're all, we're all, you never know. yeah, inquiring minds want to know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The, let's see, you want to do that first? Uh, sure, let's do some announcements. Um, the Fresno Grand Opera is presenting Les Mis. January 17th and 18th at the William Saroyan Theater. Um, call the Fresno Convention Center for tickets and info. Okay. And Bill Cosby's still coming. Did you um, get tickets yet? No, not I, yet. Okay. I'm probably going to have to buy them myself and, yeah. you know, and present them, give them to my husband for Christmas or something. <laughs> These are March 1st, you know, so get your tickets at the Convention Center for info. You can call 1-800-745-3000. All right, for all the ghost hunters out there, the Haunted St. Mary's Paracon 2014 in Virginia City, Nevada is April 18th through the 20th. Uh, this year it's going to be hosted by Doug Carnahan and NorCal Paranormal Investigators. Um, so we're St. Mary's is an awesome place. Yeah, it's, yeah. Virginia City is an awesome place. Yep. I've been, so it's, it's, yeah, it's really an awesome place. So yeah. you get to go. If you go. want more info on that, go to stmarysparacon.com. Good. I uh, want to see what CCPI is up to next. Just go to our website at www.ccpifresno.org and check our calendar. Yep, and for House of the Healer or Casa de Cuadendero, you can always go to our website as well at casadecuadendero.com. Um, we're always teaching Reiki classes, mm -hmm. both Yusui and Karuna Reikis, and we always have other stuff going on too, mm -hmm. so check us out. Okay. Okay. Well, I think that wraps it up. Right? Yep, okay. I think so. So mark your calendars for the last Wednesday of every month, the same channel, the same time. We hope that you've enjoyed our show today and that you'll join us again next month. It was a different show today. Yeah, it was. It was a really different show. It was more serious, I think, yeah. than we had done in the past. Well, you know, yeah. we really want people to try to help themselves this right. new year. You know, make, yeah. a, make a decision, make a choice, as Jackie said, right. to, uh, to do something that benefits you. Yeah. Contact us, ParanormalJourneys1 at gmail.com with questions, comments. Let us know how you like the show, what you'd like to see. And uh, next time, on behalf of Krista and myself. Yes, thank you, and take care, and be safe. Great. Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good show. I think yeah. Good show. yeah, we talked a lot longer than I thought we were going to. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention to the time. I don't think we're supposed to talk. Thank you.